ಅತಸ್ಸ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ಸ ನಮೋ ತಸ್ಸ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ಸ ನಮೋ ತಸ್ಸ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ಸ ಸಾಧು 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 ಸೊ ಟುಡೆ ದ ಸುತ್ತ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಸುತ್ತ ನಿಪತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಬೈ ಬಿಖು ಬೋಧಿ so this is a uh, sutta which is uh, 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 very common in uh, uh, for chanting so in uh, places like uh, uh, over here in sri lanka so in each uh, of our meetings or uh, we go for uh, the arms round we kind of chant this uh, sutta but uh, the sutta has a, a kind of we have not taken this up as a a reading or a sutta reading so we i am going to kind of take this sutta and it is also a very small uh, sutta and it will not take a lot of time and i'll try and explain to, uh, as much as possible about this sutta uh, one thing to uh, kind of remember or something which we have kind of found out from the reading of the sutta the suttas is that uh, uh, buddha himself said that this pro- process of metta karuna mudita upekha was uh, practiced by uh, other sects also but there were some limitations uh, which were put on that practice and uh, also uh, uh, there are times where there is no buddha sasana even that time this practices are there and they have a lot of benefit and uh, one of the uh, instances uh, buddha uh, tells oh, is himself uh, as a teacher when he was not even a bodhisattva before uh, uh, many lifetimes he was a teacher and he used to uh, teach his student and many of the students used to kind of be reborn in heavenly uh, places like uh, uh, some uh, of your students would be reborn in the brahma loka some would be reborn in the uh, arupa lokas also so uh, he s- thought that i should also be reborn in a uh, good destination and then he started doing the metta practice and uh, by doing the metta practice he had uh, uh, for 7 years he had generated so much uh, merit that he was reborn in uh, heavenly places for many many uh, times so uh, this uh, has a lot of merit uh, in in all itself but the buddha is also kind of expanding uh, the process of uh, the training by uh, including the aspects of a right effort and when we do this metta sutta with the aspects of right effort it also leads us to the awakening or the uh, ending of this cycle of samsara so the, there is a very clear uh, text uh, in the end so i'll explain uh, so let us start with the reading of the sutta so this is in sutta nipata uh, there this is uh, uh, one of the oldest uh, known collections of sutta so at the uh, when the B- buddha was alive uh this uh, uh, sutta nipata was mentioned uh, in the presence of the buddha one of the uh, bhikkhus was praised by another bhikkhu saying that this bhikkhu is very uh, intelligent and he has a very good uh, memory and he has memorized the sutta nipata so this uh, collections of suttas which are there are uh, really old and uh, they are considered to be the most authentic uh, uh, suttas or the Uh, in this uh, sutta uh, itself is considered the old teachings of the buddha and in this old teaching also the sutta nipata is considered to be a older version or uh, the uh, original uh, collections of uh, uh, memorized teaching so uh, we'll just start with the sutta this is uh, sutta number 8 in the uh, sutta nipata and it is the verse 143 this is what should be done by one skilled in good having made the big breakthrough to that peaceful state he should be able upright and very upright amiable to advise and gentle without arrogance so uh, it starts out with the advice of the person himself uh, the uh, practice uh, uh, the person who is doing the practice so how he should be he should be skilled in doing good uh, things that is dana sila bhavana those are the uh, activities which are uh, good so he should be good in that he should have made a breakthrough to that peaceful state he should be able upright and very upright amiable to ad- advise that means that he is open when he is given information when he is given advice he is uh, able to take that uh, advice 
and gentle and without arrogance. So he is not uh, somebody who is uh, has an ego. He should be content and easily supported. So uh, uh, easily supported is uh, usually used for the uh, monks uh, because monks are uh, uh, staying or uh, living on the arms which are being given to uh, the monks. So the monk who is uh, kind of uh, greedy and he uh, is demanding a lot of things, so they, they are not liked by the lay people. So the Buddha is kind of giving the uh, advice that uh, one should be content with what is there and should be uh, easy to support. A few duties and frugal way of living. Few duties means that he, the monk should not be busy. He should not take up a lot of things to do. So he does not get the time to practice. The monk should have a time to do his personal practice. So he should not take up too many activities. And uh, he should be frugal in his way. So he should not have a lot of uh, things he needs to kind of continue living. Of peaceful faculties, judicious, courteous, without greed, when among families. So there are the good qualities the person should cultivate himself before he starts uh, kind of doing the practice. He should not do anything, however slight, because of which otherwise people might criticize him. So this is also a, one of the things uh, that monks are uh, supposed to kind of take care of because for a lay uh, community, there are five precepts. But for a monk, there are uh, 227 precepts. So uh, he has to be careful of all those precepts. And some of the precepts can be kind of tricky. As we have, uh, Bhante Vimalvamsi has also kind of mentioned many of the uh, Kosambi, uh, there was a place where there was a dispute. It was a very kind of a, a subtle uh, uh, practice of uh, kind of throwing away the uh, remaining water and how this uh, has to be interpreted. There are certain uh, rules which are applied. So how uh, this rules kind of created trouble. So then uh, one has to be kind of uh, careful that he kind of follows all the uh, rules and uh, what are uh, given uh, to a monk. So that is uh, what uh, this is kind of referring to. He should uh, be content and easily supported. Uh, so this is, he should not, uh, not do anything, however slight, because of which otherwise people might criticize him. May all beings be happy and secure. May uh, they be inwardly happy. So may all beings be happy. That is Sukhi Hotu, that is uh, what uh, we uh, say as a blessing. So uh, may all be uh, may be inwardly happy, and uh, all beings be happy is a uh, term the Buddha uses because uh, what all beings want is happiness. Uh, there no being is there who says that I want to uh, uh, kind of suffer pain. I have want to uh, kind of uh, lose uh, what I have, or I want to be in misery. So there are no beings who, who kind of uh, like to be uh, miserable. So. Uh, this is a universal trait, even if it is an animal, even if it is deva, even if it is a human being, all human beings want to be happy. So uh, that is the basic state of mind. So we are wishing everybody that this state of mind uh, should be there. Sukhi hotu. Or may all beings be happy, secure, may they be inwardly happy. Whatever living beings there are, whether frail or firm, without omission, those that are long or those that are large, middling, short, fine, or gross. So when we are thinking of any beings, we are not kind of distinguishing or uh, uh, saying that we have to uh, give uh, our metta to only to the weak or only to the uh, strong, but for all beings who are there, they, they may be frail, they may be firm, they may be strong uh, without omission. So all uh, beings we are uh, sending metta to, those that are long or those that are large, middling, short, fine, or gross. So fine and gross means gross are the body which we have, uh, which is a gross body. Fine bodies are uh, the bodies of uh, devas. So even if there are devas, there are yakas, there are, uh, there are asuras, any uh, beings are there, those beings we are uh, sending the metta uh, uh, to. Whether they are seen or unseen, whether they dwell near, far or near, whether they have come to be or will come to be, may all beings be inwardly happy. So again, we are kind of seeing that uh, we, we are giving not only to 
human beings, animals, plants, but the beings which are there uh, in our uh, uh, kind of around us, which are earthbound devas, which are not seen. We are giving the metta to them also. They are near to us. Then we, uh, whether they dwell far, so all the uh, beings which are uh, living far, those beings also we are sending the metta uh, to. And Buddha says that there are certain practices where they start with a certain area they send the metta to. Say uh, they, they start the metta, uh, uh, sending the metta to say 50 feet around them. Then they go to 100 feet around them, they send metta. Then they go to uh, 200 feet, uh, 300 feet, 500 feet. But the Buddha says that without any limitations, you have to send the metta. The metta will go uh, on its own to uh, 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 the end of the universe also. So uh, this is the uh, 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 frame of mind uh, one has when sending metta. They have no limitations of space. They send in uh, directions and they don't kind of... Uh, limit that direction. They don't limit that I'll send it uh, from here to that uh, place. But uh, they will send it to this uh, direction then it will be uh, uh, unlimited and they don't kind of restrict. So that is one, uh, one uh, way of uh, doing the practice. Whether they have come to be or will come to be. Come to be means all who have uh, been born and there is a state of uh, which is called Gandhabha where the uh, being is about to be born in a, another uh, uh, kind of physical form. So that, uh, that uh, is an intermediate state. So that those are uh, the states which uh, says that they will come to be. So may all beings be inwardly happy. So every being who have been born already or they are going to be born should be happy. No one should deceive another nor despise anyone anywhere. So one uh, major thing of the world, of the modern world is that the people try and deceive others. They kind of make up uh, facts and they say lies and uh, all is done to gain a certain things for uh, themselves. But all things are impermanent. So that those uh, ignorance, which is there, that there are uh, everything which you acquire has potentially some kind of danger in it. So if you acquire wealth, then there can be a danger of taxes that uh, you have to pay taxes to the government. Then uh, there is a danger of uh, thieves who can come and uh, take those away. Then there is a danger of relatives or friends who may come and seek uh, some part of that wealth. So uh, while you uh, acquire with deceive, uh, uh, deceiving and uh, uh, those uh, kind of uh, lies, those uh, kind of uh, things will not give you happiness because still that will uh, have their own dangers and one should not also despise anyone anywhere. So one should not have hatred for anybody who is uh, uh, kind of uh, has done something wrong for them or uh, has uh, some other points of views or uh, believes in something else. So no, uh, uh, nobody should be uh, despised. Because of anger and thoughts of aversion, no one should wish suffering for another. So one thing uh, it is saying clearly that one should not kind of wish mentally also for another's suffering. And one of the sutta, the Buddha mentions clearly that once uh, somebody <coughs> sorry, wishes uh, ill will for another person, he creates a bad karma and he creates a bad destination. Even uh, thinking uh, of harm of others can lead to bad uh, results for oneself. So one should, uh, uh, because of anger or thoughts of aversion, no one should wish suffering for another being. And one should not uh, uh, also be angry. Uh, Buddha has uh, mentioned many times uh, in uh, the many other suttas that uh, anger is the most destructive of the emotions a uh, human being is capable of. So once uh, anger arises, it should be immediately uh, eliminated. It should be immediately removed. It should be immediately set aside because that emotion can cause a lot of harm to ourselves and it can cause a lot of harm to others. In, even if those uh, anger, the emotions uh, it leads to just thoughts of aversion, that also causes a harm to ourselves. So we should be careful of our emotion. Just as a mother would protect her son, her only son with her own life. 
So one should develop toward all beings a state of mind without boundaries. So uh, as a mother who has uh, only son, how much protection uh, he, she would feel for her, uh, that uh, son. So uh, for her child, he, she would feel a lot of protection and she would like to have that child uh, in a comfort and safety. In that same way, all beings you should consider uh, to be uh, as uh, uh, loving uh, to all beings and uh, 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 seek safety for all beings and not kind of uh, seek anybody's harm. So that is the mind state you should have. That is the kind of a simile the Buddha gives to kind of create the image. So it is e easy for you to uh, imagine and uh, kind of uh, uh, project that love which you have, that metta feeling of metta. So as a child, uh, uh, only child, how much you would have loved that child in the same way all beings should be loved. And uh, towards the whole world, one should develop loving kindness, a state of mind without boundaries. So in the both the lines uh, without boundaries has been mentioned. So as I had mentioned before, uh, we should not keep any kind of restrictions on where our feeling of metta is going. So when we are uh, uh, doing uh, metta in directions, if you are doing in the front direction, you just send it to front direction and don't worry about it. It will uh, go for any distance uh, as uh, much as it wants to go. It can go to the end of the universe also. You are not uh, kind of uh, 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 controlling that feeling of metta. We are not restricting that uh, feeling of metta. We are just letting that go on its own. So that is uh, uh, having no boundaries. So uh, the whole world also, we should develop the loving kindness, a state of mind without boundaries, above, below, across, unconfined, without enmity, without adversaries. So uh, in the same way, after uh, we teach in our meditation, uh, how uh, we send it to each direction, then we send it to all directions. So in the same way, the instructions are showing above, below, and across. So all the uh, directions we send the metta. Whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, as long as one is not drowsy, one should resolve on this mindfulness. They call this a divine uh, dwelling here. So uh, uh, this metta practice is not just for a sitting practice. It is not the practice only for a... Uh, retreat you go for 10 days it is a practice you take it on your daily uh, routine that is uh, while standing while walking while sitting while lying down in all postures this practice can be done uh, Bhante Vimal Ramsey had his book uh, which says that uh, life is meditation and meditation is life so in that book it uh, kind of emphasizes that the meditation is not just for sitting it is also for the daily life. And uh, currently we are working on the book, Never Mind Game, uh, Sister Kema's book. And uh, uh, hopefully in October, uh, we'll kind of uh, be able to publish it. Uh, that book is uh, uh, based on the premise of taking this practice on uh, our daily life. So we say never mind, and uh, uh, that is a way of uh, kind of uh, looking at the right uh, effort and uh, have a loving uh, smile and uh, do our daily activities. That, that a book is uh, especially focused on our daily activities and how we can take this practice in our day-to-day -day life. So the Buddha is also saying in uh, the sutta is whether standing, walking, sitting or lying down, as long as one is not drowsy, one should resolve on his, his, this mindfulness. They call this a divine uh, uh, dwelling here. So this is a divine way of uh, living in this very life when you are taking this practice to your uh, daily activities and all, all your uh, daily uh, life. Not taking up any views, possessing good behavior, endowed with vision, having removed greed from sensual pleasures, one never again comes back to the bed of a womb. So uh, the Buddha is saying that not taking any views means you, uh, you are not kind of uh, taking up sila bata paramasa, that kind of views which are saying that by uh, doing certain activities, by uh, uh, having certain uh, uh, things which you are doing, that will create a, a, a escape from the samsara. But the Buddha is saying by understanding, by kind of uh, uh, 
uh, understanding how your mind's uh, attention is working, how uh, uh, this is functioning, you will be able to kind of uh, by uh, uh, seeing and knowing and seeing the reality, knowledge and vision. So by that you will be a kind of released, but not by holding some views. Possessing good behavior means that there's the shila. You should have a good shila. You should have the five precepts of lay people and the uh, 227 uh, precepts which the monk takes. So those uh, things will really be follow. That, that is uh, for our own good. Endowed with vision. Vision is what you see in your meditation. How you, uh, how your mind is, attention is moving from one thing to another. How it is impersonal. How uh, the dependent origination is linked to all your functions. That is how you uh, kind of develop your vision. Having removed greed from sensual pleasures. So you have no attachment to sensual things like uh, which are food is there or uh, clothing is there or any other sense like a visual sense or smell or uh, touch or uh, the, any kind of uh, intellectual also. Uh, some people have uh, 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 activities which they do of thinking and pondering and uh, those kind of things. Those are all uh, sensual uh, pleasures. So uh, going uh, means you have to remove those sensual pleasures and one never again comes back to the bed of womb. So uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the being is not born in a womb means that the being does not get a human rebirth. So it can mean three things. Uh, one is that uh, the being is uh, reborn in a heavenly uh, uh, place, uh, that is uh, as a deva. So the deva also are uh, spontaneous, spontaneously born beings. They do not have a, a womb uh, they go, go through for the birth. The second is that the person or the being is uh, reborn in a uh, Brahma Loka, which is the uh, 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 Anagami. Uh, so he, he goes to the Brahma Loka and never comes back uh, again as a human being. Or it can be seen as uh, 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 the, the being is uh, becoming an Arahan. So he has no other uh, birth after that. So there is no coming back to the womb. Because uh, uh, once I was uh, just watching a documentary, uh, I think in a discovery channel, and uh, it was about the birth process and the, how difficult uh, the fetus, uh, 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 difficulties the fetus uh, uh, faces in the nine months in the mother's womb. Uh, how the, the, uh, the, uh, the space is cramped, how uh, the, uh, the uh, at one point of time when he, uh, the fetus starts kind of defecating, urinating in the mother's womb and how uh, those uh, 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 waste products, he kind of uh, is there in that same uh, place and how difficult it is for the uh, birth to, to take place. So birth, uh, means be born in a womb is kind of considered to be a dukkha. So that is the reason Jati Di Dukkha is the first thing uh, the Buddha says in the Dhamma uh, Chakka Pavadhan Sutta that uh, when uh, a person is born, there is there's a lot of dukkha which is there, which goes through. And this is a kind of scientific proof. Uh, uh, so this is uh, not about uh, philosophy or a point of view, but it can be scientifically proven that how difficult, uh, how much difficulty a fetus uh, faces in the womb. Then uh, there is uh, the aging process. When the aging process starts, then uh, uh, there are changes which happens. Changes happens in the body, in the hair, in the in the bones, uh, everything changes and it, it becomes difficult. And then uh, there is illness. Uh, so if a, fun, uh, a person becomes ill by cold or uh, uh, just has a fever, that is so much inconvenience. Then there are bigger uh, illnesses which are there. Then uh, there is the uh, process of death. That is also uh, the uh, suffering. So it starts with the birth. So when a person or a being becomes awakened, then he avoids the birth. By avoiding birth, he avoids the dukkha of the birth. He avoids the dukkha of the aging. He avoids the dukkha of the illness. And he avoids the dukkha of the death. That is the reason uh, the uh, ultimate sukha, parama sukha, uh, is considered to be nibbana. Nibbanam parama sukha. So that is the reason that by is considered to be the highest uh, happiness because they avoid all the other kinds of uh, uh, dukkha or uh, suffering for the person. So this is the uh, sutta, and uh, this is a very kind of a simple sutta, small sutta, but it has a lot of uh, relevance to us as uh, our practice. 
and a lot of good advice the Buddha is giving in this sutta. So you can uh, kind of, uh, I have given you a link uh, that uh, you can uh, download a, the, uh, do, uh, the, what is a word copy of that. And is there any uh, questions? Uh, yes. Hello, Banti. Thank you for, for that. And I'm sorry, I wasn't here for all of it. But my, my oh. question, um, my question was, did you say that uh, a type of sensual pleasure is habits of thinking and pondering? Yeah. So That's see, really all of them are essential. Uh, so <laughs> there is certain amount of uh, like philosophical uh, kind of mewling of things. Is it or is it not there? Was I or was I not there? What, uh, what, uh, what was I? And by being what, 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 what did I become? All these are philosophical uh, kind of uh, uh, thinking and pondering on ideas. So those are uh, uh, also considered sensual uh, kind of indulgences. Uh, when you are kind of uh, overthinking, overanalyzing things uh, in a way that uh, it is not uh, practical, uh, but it is kind of giving itself the thinking for thinking. Vitakka vichara, vitakka vichara doubt. We can, or, uh, we, can, we can say, uh, uh, this is a, uh, uh, what uh, one other monk, uh, Bhante, is very, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, this thing. Papancha. Papancha Sanya Sankara. So that is also, Papancha is a, a way of kind of mewling and it, it leads from one thing to another thing, to mm -hmm. another thing. So like a mind map, when you make a mind map, there is an elephant. If there is an elephant, you have, uh, things about forest, uh, thoughts about forest, forest, you have thoughts about other animals, then you have uh, thoughts about uh, uh, linked to that, those animals. And this can kind of go on uh, endlessly. If you make a mind map for anything, you know that it is endless. It kind of uh, expands endlessly in all directions. So in the same way, the prapancha is there, which kind of expands and keeps expanding. So by thinking and indulging in thinking, is also a kind of a pleasure uh, people derive. Some people kind of kind of just uh, get together and talk about uh, concepts, uh, philosophy, and all those things. So uh, the Buddha was a practical person. So he said that you have to uh, uh, understand what you are doing. So the practice is also practical. The right effort is kind of giving you uh, insight into what is happening. Is that okay? <laughs> That's really helpful. I'm my my I'm 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 thinking and pondering. I'm afraid now um, mm -hmm. about where where it's skillful to have reflection, which is yes. um, you, looking back over things that have happened, and and where it's skillful to do that, um, and where actually it's moving into unwholesome ruminating and yeah. and the, the the that pivot point between skillful reflection and 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 reflection that's actually um fueling different different thought patterns yeah so uh, that is correct the buddha does say that one has to reflect and one has to kind of uh, think in the terms of dhamma so uh, when uh, Buddha is giving advice, one of the advice he gives is uh, when uh, bhikkhus come together, they can talk about dhamma or they can keep quiet. So if it is a thing about dhamma or about our actions, uh, how, how does this action lead to uh, something else or uh, what, how did it lead to a wholesome or unwholesome? So those kind of things are uh, positive, uh, which leads us to understand and uh, get a depth of understanding of our actions and our mind. That those uh, uh, kind of contemplation is a part of the practice. Uh, one of the things uh, uh, which the Buddha uh, kind of asked Anand, uh, I think Anuruddha, when he goes to visit Anuruddha, is that uh, there are three monks uh, with Anuruddha. They, they say, how do they uh, spend their time? They, they say that they spend their time five days a week uh, they uh, kind of uh, do their practice of meditation in the night. And one day in this five days, they uh, do uh, the contemplation or uh, discussing of the Dhamma. So how did the practice go uh, or something like that? So 
discussion of dhamma is uh, a valid uh, point but uh, uh, talking about anything else uh, as a uh, practitioner is uh, buddha does not advise so uh, in that same way you can kind of keep a uh, uh, like in the uh, case of chanda the desire so if you don't have desire for awakening then how would you uh, even begin to practice so the the, the uh, desire is used in a way that is uh, taking you towards the practice so in uh, the edipada also the uh, the four uh, uh, powers which are there is the practice the uh, the that is the chanda that the, the desire is used as a means to gain a concentration so uh, we have are to use those in a skillful manner so to go into the direction of uh, uh, where uh, it is helpful but uh, it should uh, also have your faculty of wisdom always on so uh, thinking that the, is this uh, useful or is it not useful is it going it, it is directional is it going to the direction of my goals or is it is going to the di direction away from my goals so the buddha uh, also says that how do you consider yourself as an arahant we said you uh, when a uh, unwholesome thought comes you know there is an unwholesome thought the, if there is a thought of greed which is there of delusion which is there you know there is a, a thought of greed or delusion then you know that you are not uh, still uh, fully awakened but when there is no thoughts of uh, greed uh, hatred delusion then you know for yourself that uh, those thoughts are not there in me so that time you can uh, yourself consider you should to be awakened so in that same way you have to kind of uh, be the judge of that situation it is not an external thing that somebody else can uh, tell you but you have to be kind of judge so it uh, the buddha kind of gives a uh, responsibility uh, for your practice to you and uh, makes you in charge because uh, you would be the best judge of what is happening in your mind so it is not something which can be gained from external uh, this thing a, a, a teacher may be a very uh, accomplished teacher but he will not be able to pass on the, that those things which are something which a, a person has to develop inside so that is the uh, uh, crux of the uh, buddha's teaching is that to be uh, uh, responsible and to be kind of open to uh, 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 analyze and uh, find out where you are going so that that is the reason uh, the six hours which are starts it starts with recognition recognition that uh, as of now you are not on the path then let it be so you don't kind of blame yourself also you don't kind of uh, curse yourself you said let it be then you relax re smile and return so the the mistakes are uh, a part of the process so we cannot be always right all, all the time but the process is that when we find out we are right the correction a corrective process has been given okay thank you so much that's really clear <laughs> yes yes uh, i've got a question vanti thank you um it's in the last verse again um and it says not taking up any views could you just say a little bit more about that see uh, uh taking up views means that uh having some form uh kind of uh, uh ideas uh form ideas uh, buddha is kind of saying in many other places also that the views which you are taking you have to gently hold those views because uh, it's a means to an end the views are a means to an end even the view that uh Uh, of meta is a means to an end you know so uh, when we are uh, 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 holding on to something uh, then we will not be able to kind of relinquish that see like the buddha says that one example the buddha gives is a, a, by simile that there's a, say uh, there is a certain land uh, which has been ravaged by uh, wars and uh, a group of people come across and find there is a bales of cotton which are there which are unclaimed and they are abandoned no, nobody has a claim on this uh, bales of uh, cotton so they take up the bales of cotton two friends are there they they take up one bale of cotton each and they start on their journey to their village then they find that there is a uh, some copper which is uh, there uh, uh, lying around so one of the friends says i will keep down the uh, bale of uh, cotton 
and I'll take up copper. Then uh, the, uh, the first friend says that, no, no, I have taken uh, the, the cotton and I'll keep the cotton with my, myself. Then uh, as they go along, uh, they find that there is silver over there lying around. So uh, the second friend uh, throws the copper and takes up the silver. And uh, he, uh, he uh, continues his journey with the silver. Then he finds gold. So he, he throws the silver and takes up the gold. So in this manner, uh, when, uh, when a person uh, starts practice, uh, the practice may be just for sila. So uh, by uh, doing sila, he will get maybe a piece of wine. By uh, do, uh, the, uh, starting to do the sila practice, he will go to the bhavna practice so for the deepening of the concentration. When he gets a deepening of concentration, he has a, 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 a higher uh, level of understanding. So he will leave the, uh, uh, just the calmness, but he will go uh, uh, to uh, a, a tranquility. Towards the tranquility, he will go like in uh, our practice, uh, we started metta, then we go to karuna, mudita and upekha. So in this way, we kind of leave one and take up the another. So in this way, we do not kind of uh, hold on to a certain view forever because uh, uh, we uh, uh, means uh, grow with what is our practice uh, kind of teaches us. So that is the reason uh, the Buddha says not to hold any view. That is, the, there is no permanent view. The ultimate view when you are getting, then there is no holding of any views. So uh, the description of uh, Arhant in one of the ways is that he holds no views. So he has uh, no views, but he has the uh, vision. So he has the uh, uh, direct seeing of reality. So it is not by a certain viewpoint which he is looking at anything. He's not grasping. Huh? Not grasping anything. And yes, also making a judgment, and also not making a judgment. Not making a judgment, yes. So that, that uh, is a kind of state of the mind of the Arahant. Okay, thank so, you very much. Okay. Is there any other uh, questions? Any questions about practice are also uh, welcome. So anyways, uh, I just wanted to update that we have two books of uh, Sister Thema in uh, kind of uh, uh, pipeline. One is of her, her uh, exposition of the Sutta and the another is Nevermind Game. So we finally found a person uh, from a website uh, to kind of uh, lay out the book. And uh, there is a printer who is ready to print that uh, in Malaysia. And we'll put this in uh, Kindle as well as uh, a print on demand. So the Kindle has a, a print on demand, so you can get a uh, order it and we can uh, get a printed copy also. So uh, hopefully by end of October, we will get this done. So this is the thing which we are working on and we'll work on other books also. So we have certain uh, kind of works to offer uh, uh, in print and uh, and digitally available for everybody to kind of uh, access. So that is our plans uh, and uh, we'll uh, maybe uh, 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 keep uh, periodically updating what is happening. Where is, uh, is there any other thing you want to discuss or? Uh, where, is, where, is, where, is where is Delson? Where is Delson now? Delson. I think uh, that is enough, I think, for today. Uh, where is, so, where is uh, Delson, please? Uh, yes. Delson Armstrong. Where is Delson Armstrong? Delson is in Deer Park. In, uh, Deer Park. Uh, Delson ah, is in uh, Deer Park. Yeah. And next to uh, sister, sister is not in India? No, she is in uh, Poland. Poland. Uh, because mm. uh, of her health, uh, uh, she has to kind of uh, be over there. Uh, she is getting her treatment. Today also she had gone to the hospital to get her uh, kind of treatment and uh, it got delayed. So that is, uh, uh, Delson is uh, doing a retreat now. Uh, and uh, uh, after this, there are uh, two more, uh, three more retreats actually. So he will go to uh, Bodh Gaya, then uh, from Bodh Gaya he will go to uh, Yavatman. Yavatman. Mm. 
and then from Yavatnal he go to uh, in uh, West Bengal. West, West Bengal. Bengal uh, uh, Next, uh, how is Bante and his health? Bante is uh, stable and he is still in hospital. Uh, that is the last uh, update and uh, sister had spoken to uh, Bante. He still kind of uh, uh, has a lot, a long way to go. So it is related to old age. So it is uh, something uh, which takes, uh, cannot be kind of uh, re resolved uh, quickly. But uh, Bante is taken care of, that is uh, David is taking care of him and then uh, he is there in a better good facilities. He was shifted and uh, to a specialist facility. So he is being taken care of. And there's a lot of uh, support for him. Yes. Okay. <laughs> then we'll share the merits. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.